Hello, hello, hello. I promised that I would publish the solutions to problem 182 today. What was that problem? Here is Earth and here is a galaxy. Someone in the galaxy is sending electromagnetic wave towards Earth. Let the frequency be F. The galaxy is moving in this direction. And this angle is alpha. And the speed of that galaxy is given by V over C, which is half the speed of light. When alpha is zero, the galaxy is moving away from us. We always see redshift. When alpha is 180 degrees, the galaxy is always moving towards us. And so we will also always see blue shift. In the case of redshift, the frequency that we will receive on Earth will be lower than the frequency emitted. In the case of blue shift, the frequency that we receive on Earth is higher than the frequency emitted by the person in the galaxy. If frequency is higher, then the wavelength is shorter. Okay. Here is the key equation in relativistic Doppler shift. The frequency received by us on Earth divided by the frequency emitted by the person in the galaxy is given by this equation. Gamma is due to the time dilation. It's the famous Lorentz contraction, 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta square. In our case, it is 1.155. When alpha is 90 degrees or 207 degrees, the frequency received by us divided by the frequency emitted is 1 over gamma. Because beta cosine alpha will be zero. And so it is 1 over gamma. That means that 1 over gamma, which is 0.866, is smaller than 1. And therefore, the frequency we receive is always lower than the frequency emitted. Therefore, we have always redshift. Many of you think that the solutions are 90 degrees and 70 degrees, but that is not correct. When the angle is 90 degrees or 270 degrees, there is always redshift, for which we have a name in physics. We call that transverse Doppler shift. What we want is that the frequency received is the same as the frequency emitted. Therefore, there is no blue shift and there is no red shift. So that only can only happen if 1 plus beta cosine alpha is 1 over gamma. That's a trivial equation, high school equation, and you find immediately that the cosine of alpha is then minus O 0.268. And you find two angles. Alpha is 105.5 degrees and 254.4 degrees. So with these angles, 
There is no red shift and there is no blue shift. I have plotted here the ratio frequency received decided by frequency emitted. And I have done that as a function of alpha. It's a very interesting plot. If the value is larger than one, then we have blue shift. So everything above this line means blue shift. Everything below the line will be red shift. And you see here the 105.5 degrees and you see here the 254.5 degrees. If you look at 90 degrees here, this is 80, this is 100, so this is about 90 degrees here. Notice that the value is smaller than 1, thus redshift. So, if we look now at the picture, Alpha is zero, yes, there is red shift. Alpha is 180 degrees, yes, there is blue shift. However, when alpha is 254.5 degrees, so that is this angle, or when alpha is 105.5 degrees, which is this angle, then there is no red shift and there is no blue shift. If the angle is larger than 254, it's blue shift. If the angle is larger than 105, then there is blue shift. If the angle is smaller than 105, there is red shift. If the angle here is smaller than 254.5, there is red shift. And you see this here in the same way. Notice, however, there are an infinite number of angles for which there is no redshift and no blue shift. They all lie on a cone with a half top, top angle of about 74.5 degrees. Look at the figure. I have it here. This angle is 74.5 and this angle here is also 74.5. So they all lie on the cone with a half tough angle of 74.5 degrees. 105.5 and 254.5 are only two of them. 180 minus 105.5 is the same as 254.5 minus 180 and that is 74.5. So that's half the top angle of that cone. If beta were 0.99, so the galaxy would move relative to us with a speed of 99% of the speed of light, then gamma would be 7.089. Huge time dilation. So 1 over gamma, which is the transverse Doppler shift, would be 0.141. It means the frequency, the reduction in the frequency, Emitted one by the galaxy, 
to receive by us that reduction is a factor of seven. And angles with no red shift and no blue shift would be on a cone with a half top angle of 30 degrees. You can work on that yourself to confirm that. So notice that with that high speed, the transverse Doppler shift is enormous. A last point. I stated above that for alpha is 180 degrees that we have always blue shift. Is that always true? Notice I stated that here. It's obvious that we always have red shift when alpha is zero degrees. Figure that out for yourself. But is it true that we always have blue shift if the galaxy is moving in our direction like this? Okay. If alpha is 180 degrees, then the cosine alpha is minus 1. So the ratio, frequency received divided by uh, frequency emitted, is then 1 divided by gamma times 1 minus beta. Now gamma is the square root, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta square. So 1 over gamma is 1 minus the square root of 1 minus beta square. And I have to divide that by 1 minus beta. And so you very simply get the answer that if alpha is 180 degrees, that the ratio frequency received by frequency emitted is the square root of 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta. And that's always larger than 1. Because beta is always larger than zero. So it is the square root of a number which is larger than one divided by a number which is smaller than one. So that is always larger than one. Indeed, it is therefore correct that if the object, if the galaxy is moving directly in the direction of the Earth, there is indeed always blue shift. This was a brief lecture. I suggest you may want to watch it more than once. This physics is not familiar to almost all of you. I've made an effort to teach you physics, to teach you this kind of physics. Relativistic Doppler shift is often very non-intuitive. I spent a lot of time on my solutions. I rewrote them at least six, seven times. I hope they are clear now. And I hope you will make an effort to understand my solution. If you succeed, you have learned some physics, some very important physics. Key in astronomy. I am leaving for Europe on October 3, arriving in Amsterdam early morning of October 4, a week in the Netherlands and then five more days in Paris. I go often to Europe. The flights from Boston are always at night. You arrive 
early morning in Amsterdam. You haven't slept all night. And you arrive there at six, seven o'clock in the morning when everyone wakes up. You have six hours jet lag. I hate the jet lag. And it often takes me more than three days to get over that. Well, I'm not sure that I will be in the mood during my vacation to send you a new problem, but I might. It would be nice if I did that, that someone would send me a perfect solution, which I could use verbatim without doing any work. Be that as it may, we'll be friends. That's always a given. And that's what counts. It's one of the strongest conservation laws in physics.